This is KGW News at Noon. New at noon, it is finally the first day of school for kids in the Evergreen School District. The strike is officially over after nearly two weeks. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christine Pitowanich. The teachers union took a vote and agreed to a new contract with the district this morning. Classes started after a two hour delay today. Both the union and district worked through the weekend and came to a tentative agreement around 630 last night. The new agreement includes 10 new special education student support teachers with more to come next year, as well as cost of living increases over the next three years. The seven days of school students missed because of the strike will be added on to the school year. Okay, let's check in with meteorologist Rod Hill in the Weather Center. Rod, what are uh, things looking like today? Yeah, well, we will continue to be dry more than likely here inland, especially up in Clark County, where we were just uh, reporting about the Evergreen School District. We do have clouds at the coast, and this is the one spot where up and down most of our reporting sites, we've in fact had some age more rainfall today. Generally, it's been four one hundredths of an inch or more like a tray, 61 right now. But there has not been any sun that I have seen. In fact, it's still pretty foggy in Lincoln City. You folks expected to overall remain cloudy this afternoon and certainly the chance of getting a dab of light moisture still with you. Clouds over Stoller Family Vineyards Estate down in Dayton. There are some breaks up here in Portland and we're actually at 73. So, so far here in the Rose City, a cooler Monday has been about as pleasant as it could possibly be. I still like our chances of holding in the 70s, although you could make the case we could get just barely up to 80, 77 I have for the high today. Eyeing a chance of showers tomorrow, and then we'll also update the track of Hurricane Lee spinning out in the Atlantic Ocean. That's coming up. Okay, thank you, Rod. A solemn ceremony was held this morning at Ground Zero in New York, marking 22 years since the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. The ceremony began with a bell ringing and a moment of silence at the National September 11th Memorial. Observances were also held today at the Pentagon and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, as well as other locations across the country. President Biden is observing the day at a military base in Anchorage, Alaska, as he returns from his G20 trip. And closer to home, firefighters in Portland held a moment of silence this morning to honor the first responders and many others who died on 9-11. Nearly 3,000 people lost their lives that day. Thousands more were injured. This is video from Fire Station 1 in downtown Portland this morning. Portland Fire also wanted to honor the first responders that survived that day, but later dealt with the effects of chemicals, fumes, and dust from the attacks. At least 2,000 first responders and others have died from 9-11 related illnesses. Students, families, and alumni from Milwaukee High School are remembering 59-year-old coach Roland Amuller. The longtime assistant football and track coach was a fixture in the community for more than 30 years. Coach Om, as he was lovingly known as, passed away suddenly after a football game at Park Rose Friday night. Hundreds of people showed up near Milwaukee High's field for a vigil last night. They lit candles and exchanged memories of Coach Om, who they say helped raise the kids of Milwaukee. Alumni from the past two decades were part of the gathering. Many of them said they wanted one last chance to thank the coach that treated them like family. You know, Om didn't have any kids, so this was his family. You know, all the, all the athletes that he, that he uh, coached. So he treated them like they were his own sons or daughters, you know, from peanut butter sandwiches to, to Gatorade out the back of his car. He, he turned me into the person I am today. You know, I give him all the credit, you know, and he, you know, and I'm proud of who I am because I am. There is a petition to name the field at Milwaukee High School in honor of Ah Mueller. Now to the devastating earthquake in Morocco. Rescue crews are just beginning to reach remote areas of the country as the death toll continues to rise. More than 2,400 people have died. Even more have been injured from the massive 6.8 quake. Then on top of it all, a 3.9 aftershock rattled hard hit communities yesterday. NBC's Raf Sanchez has a look. This morning, the desperate search for survivors entering a critical phase. Rescue teams from Morocco and around the world racing to make every minute count. 
It's now been more than 48 hours since this 6.8 magnitude quake struck south of Marrakesh. The most powerful tremor in this region for more than 100 years, sending locals and tourists alike running for their lives in the streets of the historic city. This wedding singer cut off mid-song. I was petrified. Some people were just crying and screaming. But the worst of the devastation in remote villages in the high Atlas Mountains, where adobe homes couldn't withstand the force of the quake. Moments of exhausted joy when survivors are found in the rubble, but also heartbreak when rescuers arrive too late. Working in, in these situations, search and rescue is still paramount, of paramount importance. We traveled up a winding mountain road blocked in places by boulders to reach the village of Moulay Brahim. This village was home to 3,000 people, but locals say at least 40 have been killed. That's more than 1% of the population that lost their lives. Sorry. Among them, Lawson's three daughters, baby son, and wife. I'm all alone now, he says. I had a home and a family. Now I have nothing. This ID card, Madame. the only photograph he has left. The UN says 300,000 people across the region were impacted by the quake. And in small villages and major cities, many families are still sleeping in the streets, terrified that aftershocks could yet bring their homes crashing down. Hearts are heavy here in the Northwest too. Both a Moroccan man living in Portland spoke with us, whose wife and daughter are in Morocco, as well as the owner of Kasbah Moroccan Cafe in Portland's Old Town. People start calling, people start like check, checking on each other, sharing phone numbers. My heart felt um, broken and I called him as soon as I get uh, off work. Both say their families are safe but scared. We also spoke with a Portlander on vacation in Morocco when the quake hit. Fortunately, he's not hurt. It just like lasted for so long. It just kept like shaking. We we're just like, oh my, like, we just like kept looking around at each other in disbelief. Authorities in Morocco say some of the worst damage is in remote areas. And right now, there's no telling how high the death toll will go.